Studio 666, starring the band The Foo Fighters, was released this past weekend. Yes, Dave Grohl and company starred in their very, very own horror comedy romp. And I made the trek out to the theaters to go check it out. I'd like to share my thoughts on the film and whether you should see it or not in this episode of the GCAP Recaps. Cap or crap? Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Quick heads up that this review will contain minor spoilers because I actually have to you know, review the film for you, so I'm not going to give away anything crazy. So with that put aside, and without further ado, let's get capping. The Foos are having trouble finding inspiration to write music for their 10th studio album because they really, really want to make it special. And they're having a bit of, Dave Grohl likes to call, musical constipation. This leads their manager, Shill, played by Jeff Garland, who most of you probably know from Curb Your Enthusiasm and the Goldbergs fame, to arrange for the band to record their music at a creepy old house. What the band doesn't realize is that back in 93, another band called Dream Widow attempted to do the same thing. They were recording their opus at this house and they never finished because the lead singer wound up killing the rest of the bandmates, and then offing himself. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a foreshadowing of what's to come. Dave gets the rest of the foos to agree to record at this house, but even after some time, Dave's still having that trouble finding that sound that he desperately needs to record this album. But what he does find is a secret door leading to some creepy basement with all kinds of weird demonic stuff kind of lying around and also an old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. This tape recorder is very special because it houses the killer song that Dave instantly falls in love and becomes infatuated with. This is the sound for the band's new album, and his new purpose is to finish this song as he becomes possessed by demons. Dave gets the band all hyped up to finish this epic tune, but after some time recording, the rest of the band starts to notice that something's a little off about their leader. His infatuation for finishing this song has turned into some kind of weird obsession. And things only get worse from there. I'm making this sound very serious, but keep in mind that this is a horror comedy. But it's a bizarre take on the horror comedy. I mean, the, the film is almost in many ways kind of like Return of the Living Dead, in which it's laugh out loud funny almost kind of starts going into a slow burn horror and the full blown horror at the end. And I'm not surprised considering this was directed by BJ McConnell, who also did Hatchet 3. And the Foo Fighters are well known for being big horror fans. Hell, look no further than the Everlong video for being heavily inspired by Evil Dead 2. I saw the trailer for this when I went to see Scream, but it wasn't even like a normal trailer. It was in between a Diet Pepsi commercial and an M&M commercial. In fact, I thought it was fake at first. I thought it was a way to hype up their new album or some kind of new creative way to talk about their upcoming tour. But when I realized it was a movie and it was a band I actually like, the Foo Fighters, doing a horror comedy, which something absurd like this hasn't been done for some time, I just had to, had to check it out. I am a fan of the absurd. I mean, <laughs> besides the Foo Fighters playing slightly exaggerated versions of themselves and Jeff Garland, the film also stars comedian Whitney Cummings, who plays their neighbor, who might or might not have good intentions for the band. Will Forte, who plays a delivery man trying to get into the music business. Jimmy Simpson, who many of you are going to recognize from It's Always Sunny. Leslie Grossman from American Horror Story. And John Carpenter also has a cameo in the film. That's not a spoiler either because the very beginning credits sequence, you'll notice he's listed as co-composing the main theme for the movie. Ah, that's pretty cool. What about the Foos themselves? Well, let's just say they're, they're, they're musicians for a reason and not actors, but some of them were actually really surprising. Obviously, we know Dave Grohl was, is going to be funny. Like I, I, you know, I, I think he can act. He, he pulled this off pretty well. And also, Rami was... It was pretty hilarious. I mean, he kind of came off as like a like a horny Ringo star. It's the only way I can describe him. But 
I'll tell you, the, the, the person that stole this movie was Pat Smear. For all of you non-Foo Fighter fans, let me just say it one more time. The name is Pat Smear. It's not his real name, of course. He's not even trying to act, and it just works. It's hilarious. Every time the guy was on screen doing something, it was hilarious. There's product placement everywhere, especially when it comes to Doritos. I have a feeling that Doritos invested a ton of money in this movie. There is Dorito eating in every scene, especially by one Pat Smear. This is one you cannot take seriously, though. It's, it's very self-aware. It's very self-referential. It's the Foo Fighters, who aren't actors, acting in a movie, look like they're having a good time. I think them having a good time kind of made me feel like I was having a good time. When the film's trying to be funny, it's really funny, especially with a, a Pearl Jam running joke throughout the whole movie. But when it gets to the horror element of it, uh, while it's still a horror comedy, probably that third act really goes straight into horror. And all you gore hounds out there are going to love the gore effects because it gets gory. I don't think your normal Foo Fighter fans are going to get excited about it, but seriously, has some of the most creative kills I've probably seen in the past handful of years in a horror movie. <laughs> so what's the verdict? Is it cap or is it crap? <laughs> if you're a Foo Fighters fan, you should absolutely see it. If you're not a Foo Fighters fan, don't be turned off by that. That means you probably means you don't like the music. There are none of the Foo Fighters songs in the movie until you hit the end credits, so you're safe there. If you love horror comedies, you should definitely check it out. But I will say this. I mean, I, I kind of have a unique taste in films, so it's not necessarily I'm telling everybody to rush out to see the movie unless you're into, you know, bizarre cinema. I have a feeling that this one's going to uh, get a, a second life on streaming services and, and people are going to appreciate that a little bit more versus having to pay a full ticket price to see it in the theater. As I said, I did enjoy it. I like horror comedies. I do like the Foo Fighters. I like some of the co-stars that they, they picked for the movie as well. I, I had a great time. My biggest qualm about the film was the running time. I mean, it, it runs an hour and 48 minutes. It's a long time for a horror comedy. I feel like, you know, there, there could have been 20 minutes shaved off and it would have been great. I, I know they were trying to poke fun at the whole, you know, slow burn movies that have been coming out lately, but I, I think it did a disservice to itself. I, I think it should have just stayed making fun of your evil deads and, and, and your exorcists and just having a good time. But again, comedy was excellent. Gore was excellent. If I had to give it a cap or crap, kind of puts me in a bad position because I didn't hate the film by any means. I don't think it's the greatest film either where I'm like, oh, you guys got to go run out and see it today. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'd probably say it's, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's in the middle either. I say it's, it's, it's more towards the, the cap. For most of you though, I would say wait for it to come on streaming and give it a shot. And once again, let me give a shout out to that song that they're recording in the movie that is not Foo Fighter-esque at all. As I said, it's co-composed by John Carpenter, which is pretty badass. And I wish that would be released. The film was only screened in 2,300 theaters across the United States, and it only brought in a little under $2 million. So this one's officially a flop. And I don't see things getting better for it next weekend with the Batman coming out. I think this is one and done for the foos. But I will say this. If you saw the trailer, or if you, after my review, go check out the trailer now, and that trailer interests you, I think you're going to like the movie. My only qualm, again, just a little long. But I don't know. At least you get your money's worth, I guess. And that's it. Please comment, like, subscribe. Help support the growth of my channel. I'd much appreciate it. And like I always say, anytime you watch a GCAP recap, you always have a seat at my bar. Till next time.